I wanted to look at 08. I wanted to look at our kill of 08 and talk through, like, what we did and, and what I felt about the fight in general. Because uh, I thought that'd be pretty neat to take, like, a little review. So we're going we're gonna to look at that now. Uh, yeah, dude, these stupid old chat can't respond to the new chat. Look at that. You guys are even above them. I put, them, I put you above them so you can even look. Put you above them. Okay, so we already have some markers down on the floor. Those will be relevant in a little bit. So th this boss, like, I figured out some of these mechanics very quickly. But something that I neglected to figure out on this was the mana charge. So I sort of was, like, noting it very early on in the fight, actually. But it didn't look like it did much. Or it, I thought it was just casting this next ability. Which, it, it, it's not actually the case. It's, like, storing the next ability that it does. So it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. But the actual mechanics itself were quite quick with the question marks where I was like, oh, we have to do the opposite thing. Because I don't really remember, like, cooking this fight on normal, right? But uh, when we do these me mechanics there, you see the release come out. And the release was very much like, again, I didn't figure out the mana charge and the release for a little while. But then once I figured it out, it just the whole fight clicked. But then we, th this was cool to figure out where you have the question mark train tracks. Because the question mark circle is pretty easy. Just, like, stand in the bad. Like, okay, that makes sense. But the train tracks was like, wait, but why do I die if I stand here on one line? And it's like, because you have to fully negative. You have to go the full negative effect. So that was really cool to figure that one out. And that one I figured out in a, it, pretty quick. So that was nice. But again, it was just the mana charge and mana release that was holding me back from progressing this fight quicker. Um... And then we got our first gravy image, which is cool. This is such a good fight, man. This is such a good fight. So you get your gravy image. I'm just trying to remember what the first one is. The first one is uh, the knockback, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So knockback into split into double soak. So this was a little bit awkward because you'd be cleaving people. But figured out what the tether did pretty quick. It was just like a knockback, which made sense. And then we have the soak. And we, that's where our markers are, where we have one, two, three, four in a line, and we'd assign people. So me and Damien, for this whole fight, we are duos. And we would just assign our duos, and you can see in an explosion, one, two, three, four. So they're roughly sort of in position. And then we have to haul ass to the boss. Now, you can actually know where the boss is going to be a little bit ahead of time, which was kind of cool, because the boss will appear with the black rings ahead of time. Then you have Light of Judgment, which is just like big AoE. Yeah, I think healing on this fight would be really cool because there's a lot of moments in this fight, especially in phase two, where there's just so much healing that needs to be done. So I feel like this would be a really sick heal fight. So we get another mana charge. And this is the mana charge where... So this was double stay out, yeah? Yeah, this was double stay out. And then... Oh, no, 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 no. This is... He's charging now. He's charging now. So this is stay out and then get in yeah yeah it was stay out and then it was get in yeah 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 so he's charging those so that's the cool little memory aspect of this boss which again i really liked i thought it was really cool that it was variable with a memory game i love that for a fight so i liked it in 07 it's a bit of a memory game in 07 but you obviously have the tv that's like prom prompting you with stuff but then the boss would skip sometimes so it was all quite cool Wait, I thought we want to be in the circle. Yeah, there we go. I think that worked. Okay, we didn't die, so that's good. But uh, 07 was a bit of a memory game, so was... Uh, where else was the memory game? I'm trying to think about the bosses where we've had memory games. Oh yeah, 09. 09 is a memory game a bit as well, sort of. I, again, there's like a bit of variety in it. It's not so much a strict memory game in 09. It's more so just like the order of mechanics can shift and i really like that next we have our, our ne next gravy image so we have the rock soak again damien's my partner so we have the purples around the edge of the room and then we have the rocks stay on the edge so i'm a rock this time so i'm going to stay on the edge and let damien go central oh no I wasn't wrong. Okay. Well, you know. Dude, I died to arrow assault so many times. I died to arrow assault tons. I would forget that every single time. Managed to remember it this one. The last handful of pulls that we had on this guy, I was remembering the empty knockback every time. Arm's length. But 
every single pull up until this, just, I'd forget. And it took us 75 pulls, give or take a few. I didn't, I probably didn't track it perfectly, but it's about 75. And I'm pretty sure I called something like 75. Chat, even chat said that maybe I said 75 pulls exactly, so I think I was really close to guessing this ahead of time. Okay, then this graven image, I think, is the look away. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's side of the map. Cool. And then we have to spread. Because we had no question mark eyes. And then we have train tracks. So this is... I die here. This is where I, I wanted to... So I was trying to yaten. I was trying to push back. But I wasn't close enough to the boss. And I honestly should have just charged the boss. Because I wanted to drop my soak further. Like, I wanted to stay and drop my soak further out. But I had enough time to drop my soak and still make it to the boss. So that was just me sort of... Trying something there that just didn't quite execute. Unlucky. Unlucky. But that's okay. R right idea, bad execution. Very fine idea, bad execution. Now we have the lady in the sky with the with the boobies. So now this is look away or look forward. So this was kind of awkward to still figure out. Like it was either yellow question mark eye, which meant look forward at the statue, not the boss. Or we had purple eye, which meant look away. Uh, and then we have the sleeps we assigned in the middle of the room. The mind controls we assigned to the edge of the room. And we tried to assign, like, sort of cardinals, but also there are lines on the floor. So you can separate, you can put someone here on, like, A marker. And then you can leave a gap, and then you can put someone there. And then you have all the sleeps in the middle, and you should never get uh, touched. So this was quite cute. It was always pretty scary every time watching everyone run into us. Right, here we go. And then we know boss is going to jump to the edge. But I think I died. That What do I actually die to on this? This is actually... I'm unsure. Is this an explosion from the eye in the sky? Because I've got my camera down. So I think I needed to look away. Yeah. I think that's I needed to look away. So that was something that I wasn't actually aware of until I died to it at this moment where I went, oh shit, okay, we're gonna have an overlap there. So I died twice so far in this fight, which is suboptimal. Suboptimal, perhaps. But we're getting close to phasing. Yeah, the eye towers. Just, un just unlucky. But I really like this fight. I love the variation of the graven image. And then also... Well, it's not really variation. Like, there sort of is variation in that. But as in, it's consistent the same images every time. But variation in how you solve it. Yeah. Kind of had the right idea, but the eye didn't emanate from the boss. Yeah, the eye emanates from the statue, doesn't it? So you have to respond based on whatever the statue is telling you. I LB3. I don't know what LB2. I don't know how I still make it out in time, but I do get really lucky there. I didn't even yap that away. That's funny. And then boss should phase soon. And then we actually wipe, I think, pretty quick after the boss phases because we just want clean cooldown timings. Yeah, so there's the phasing of the boss. Really, really cool little transition. He goes Super Saiyan. I'm going to leave the transition in because I think Kind of a nice transition. Kind of a cute transition. Beautiful. Yeah, this this was such an epic boss. Like this, this was really good. Door bosses, I like. I didn't think I was going to like door bosses that much. I complained about 04 being a door boss when I first saw it. And I was like, ah, we're not going to get much uptime on like P1. We're going to get more uptime on P2, which means we're going to kill the boss quicker. But it was still really good. Like, there's still a meaningful amount of uptime on this. So, I, I was happy. So then this is the cool bit. So, oh wait, no, we wipe. <laughs> this is the cool bit. Everyone jumps off the edge. No, not this. Okay. So we wipe early so that we can get better cooldown timings. So I'll skip ahead a little bit. So this was cool. Obviously, everyone needs to be topped health there. That's the mechanic. And then everyone drops to one. And then you have to blast up some healing for Ultima, which is really cool. Again, healing on this fight, I just think would look so insane. Or would be so fun to do. 
And then you're going to see me do some cute little shenanigans where I'm going to hard, uh, hard, like, greed for my Mishonics, uh, for my uptime. And then we're all going to nicely spit, split. So this took a little while to figure out with, like, the group soak and four people going right and four people going left. Where I was, why did this take us so long to figure out, chat? It was like... It was pretty easy to figure it out initially, but we were dying to too many people being involved on the right side stack. So we just needed to shuffle one person over to the left and like that was it. But we ended up being, it ended up being a big cooking session because you guys made me feel like I was missing a large component. But it wasn't, it, it, yeah, so initially you were overshielding it right, and overhealing it, uh, which is good for the LB timer, but Ultimately, all the answer was is that we just wanted four people on the left and four people on the right, wasn't it? Because initially we had three on the left and five on the right. And that, that was sort of it. And then once we were comfortable there, that, that was it. The problem was that the wrong people were in the stack. Oh, was it like DPS based? Because we sent all the... Oh yeah, we sent all the DPS to the left. That was it. Because the fire explosions were killing people, huh? So some fire exploded on the share. Yeah, it was supports and DPS. Yeah. And then we get our first Forsaken. This is like a good faint opportunity, but I started to not faint on this one because we seem to just be in a good position after a lot of prog. So I was saving faint for like a later one. Eh, it's a bit whatever. I watched an Arthur's video who said who cares about faint. Then this was really fun to figure out. So this was the heads on the side. You get two on the west, two on the east. And then you have the tower soaks. I didn't actually figure out that this was a numeration for a long time. We had the two orbs rotating around, which I just, like, I knew that they were there, but I just, it was sort of, it was background information, you know? I just didn't really think about it. Like, I saw them rotating, I just thought it was, like, a cool visual. I didn't think that it was, like, an aspect of the mechanic. But I figured out very quickly that one person soaking wasn't enough, but two people seemed to be enough. Because we were getting the damage down, weren't we? And it was like, oh, this is a problem, we don't want the damage down. And then the heads I realized with the tether that you'd get two in the west and two in the east. So it was like, right, whatever side your head spawns on, soak the opposite tower, which means we would have two people on the right, two people on the left. And then for healing, we would stack both healers in the middle. And then whoever didn't have those things would just move out the way. So I think it was tanks every time, wasn't it? I, maybe it was tanks every time that never had a tether, but I'm not 100% sure. And then we'd have to rotate round, soak your own head after you get healed a little bit. And then wings. Wings was instantaneous to figure out what to do with Wings. Wings was o uh, A6. Wings was A6 when it was double wing glow and then cleave on the side of the room with a single wing. So A6 uptime meant that I uh, figured this one out pretty quick. Um, uh, is O8 the first instance of towers that need multiple people? I don't think so. Maybe. They changed tower design. If you remember tower design in, in coils, it's very different. You actually have pillars, and the pillars would dictate how many people have to soak, I believe. Whereas now they use, like, orbs floating around. So then you have to do the same thing again. You have to do your heads, floats, and your soaks. And then Light of Judgment, everyone needs to get healed up. So this is why we let the healers AFK in the middle, so they can spam healing. I think this glass breaking. What is the glass breaking? Is the ca uh, is the panels breaking like dictating a change of a phase? Is it saying like right, okay, new things are gonna happen now? Is it just like a bit of just sort of visual like just trying to be cute, you know? Is this a cool effect? Yeah, just. I, I, but I think it also signifies that a change is happening, sort of. Like, not like a hard phase, but a soft phase. So then Trine. Trine was really cool, figuring out the Doritos. I think I figured it out, like, really quick again. I think, like, the second time I saw it, I was just, I just knew what to do with it. Uh, and then Wings of Destruction, again, 06. So the way that I wanted to solve Trine is you stand away from the number one, and then you dodge into the one. So the first set of Trines that spawn, you get away from, and then you track which ones they were, and then you move immediately into them when they explode. But figuring out that they were exploding on the on the triangle points was really cool. Uh, it's uh, quite obvious, but it's nice. And then Pass Forgotten. This one got spoiled for me in chat. I mean, actually, no, it got spoiled by a, a friend. Uh, Rose Pose. 
How dare you, Rose Pose. Rose Pose told me to move... Yeah, bas basically figured out the mechanic. But it was blind for them too, so I'm not that bothered because they were also blind progging this, so I think that's cute. It's fine. So past forgotten meant that the boss is going to turn behind them. Futures... Futures... Something? Futures coming? Whatever it is. It means you have to be in... F uh, behind the boss? Yeah, for the past you have to be in front of the boss. Yeah. Let me get some big tank mechanics. Such a long fight, but a really good one. And visually, when you compare this length of fight and what's happening in this fight compared to like A8, visually this is so much better. Cleaner, a lot of the mechanics just make way more sense. I know I'm obviously solo cooking. If I wasn't, then dude, this would be a breeze. In a way. And then we have Forsaken. So I wanted another phase. I did want the boss to have a final transition. A after we got to the point where we were ready to kill, I did want a final transition. Okay, this was the fun bit. So let me, this was the really fun bit. Okay, so this took forever to execute. This took forever just to execute. But basically, the reason it took so long is because I didn't realize that these towers were enumeration for the longest time. As soon as I figured out enumeration, it got easier. But also, the clones. I didn't realize for the longest time that the clones also do futures, futures coming or past forgotten or whatever. Um, futures remembered, past forgotten. Is that what it is? And once I realized that the clones were doing that, it was way easier to tell the tanks and support actually finding out that the healers could also get it. Took a little bit of time. But then once we figured that out, then... Because originally I was going to assign people. Do, do we actually have the images? Does anyone have the images? Are they in my general channel, in my Discord? We actually had the... Yeah, here we go. Look at this. This was a, original art by Cybear. Where I had the towers and I wanted, like, Prey to come down here. And then do some little, like, loop-de-loops. And then I wanted the clones to be faced outward. And I was always specifying. Always face them outward. Always face them outward. And then we were wiping. And I was like, why are we wiping? What's going on with the clones? And then obviously no one was telling me, like, Hey, Sai. They're hitting in the middle of the room. Even though we faced them outward. Because I didn't realize about the past forgotten thing. So that was, uh, that delayed things. The prey, trying to organize those delayed things. The tower soaks initially as well. So once I figured out that all the support were getting clones and all the DPS were getting prey and like non-prey target fire, then it just got a lot easier. So preys were going south directly. So what we, what we ended up doing, in fact, I'm even gonna raid plan this, I think. Um, hold on. What we ended up doing is uh, can I get rid of all this? Oops. Yeah. What we ended up doing is for Prey, we had range go south. Melee go, like, north and sort of work. The way it would work is for Prey, you would just run up here, ready for the soak. And then these guys would sort of zigzag and then be ready for the soak. And that's sort of what we did. That's beautiful, isn't it? And then meanwhile, there'd be some towers here and here that the tanks and healers would soak. And then when we soaked this tower, because it was a four player's tower, and for the longest time I didn't realize until I figured out enumeration. Eventually I figured out enumeration, which is then eventually we were able to do this mechanic. And then we soak this tower here as four DPS, and then we AFK here, because there's gonna be a mine detonation in the middle of the room here. So, that was really cool. So, here. So, I'm going to, like, zigzag. We're going to have tanks and healers soak the initial towers. Which, originally, they weren't soaking the, the, the original towers. Originally, they were going to be soaking the, like, latter ones. Then we soak up here. I think we just quite make it. Yeah, nice. And then we have the bomb. So, we move north. And then the bomb's going to explode. We want to avoid not, like, we don't want to soak that tower because it's bad. And then, boom, that was the cleanest we did it. As soon as we did this, I knew the boss was dead. As soon as we did this, we knew it was dead. Uh, in 09S, I stood completely still to see what I got hit by and said, Oh, don't I? Yeah. I'm not used to. I still instantly, even when I'm blind, relay information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to solo cook, and then sometimes you'll just put information in. 
And, like, I never really get annoyed at anyone because I know it's not intentional. Like, I know you're just sort of pumped. So I, I, I'm not, like, gonna yell at people. But obviously, I just have to remind people because I want to try and solo cook as much as possible. But, yeah, this was good. So we're sitting on LB3 for the longest time. We probably could have committed the LB3 DPS, like, DPS LB3. Because this boss has a quite a tight DPS timer. Alright, and then we get Trine here. So we get big Dorito, and we gotta go to the edge. This was again real simple to figure out. Sometimes that middle uh, middle trine, the small Dorito, could be on the edge, in which case you would actually, you'd actually, the safe spot was in the middle, the very center of the Dorito, which was kind of cool. Um, then we have Winged Destruction again, double. In my opinion, you don't look at enough stuff to solo cook well. Damn, Snacky, that's... Wow. It's... Tell me how you really feel. Um... Okay. And then, what else happens in the fight? So, then we get that trine, and then we get... Um... And then we get... He just doesn't do anything for a little while, does he? Yeah, then he goes Forsaken. I think then he goes Graven Image. Yeah, so then this is... You're going to get knocked back. And we have three towers to soak. Two of them are two players. And then one of them is four players. So we go all the supports in the back. No, 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 no. It wasn't all the supports in the back. Because we want to maintain melee uptime as well. Oh, I mean, I think you can do it in the back anyway, but... We went double melee on the left, both tanks on the right, and then all the ranged at the back. And that's how we did all the soaks there. And I think he does a tank buster anyway, so I think that actually worked out well. And then we get the fall asleep. So then he does another set of mind control. This is, this is so good of reintroducing the graven image from phase one into phase two. So we get the graven image, which then means we either get put to sleep or we get mind controlled and then the tower breaks the sleep so the sleeps would soak the towers because we had four people would get put to sleep and we had two towers of two and then we get the mind control which that was pretty instantaneous of like figuring that out of just okay this is what we want to do we want sleeps to soak towers we want mind controls out and then this was a bit funky again where it, like getting to this phase we needed to have a little review. I'll be honest, when we first saw these phases with the Graven Image stuff going on and then this, and like there was one or two people alive just carrying the fight and getting us to see more of it, it it was actually a little bit disheartening. Where I was like, oh man, now I've got to cook this whole new set of things, this whole new set of towers and everything. But once you get past Forsaken 2, these tower soaks are really not too bad at all. This is just going back to early phase, one, uh, early phase 2. So once you have everyone alive, it's not too bad. And then we go Wings of Destruction, and we have a Tower Soak, but I see four people are soaking it, so I don't move in. And then we go Ultima. And then we don't want to be on the right-hand side of the map, or the wing. So this was a cool... I like this overlap, where you can't be in, like, three quarters of the map. That's a cool little overlap. Um, and then... Wait, what did I die to? I think I just died to, like, damage, didn't I? Yeah, I'm not topped. And then, do I maybe get... Yeah, so I don't quite get topped. I do have a defensive available. So 12,500. Maybe my defensive would have saved me. Maybe. And then... And then we get trying with Wings of Destruction. So this is like the end stage. I think I even looked at LB3, DP, like DPS LB3 here. Because we're in the stage of the fight where... There's going to be another set of like... 
there's going to be another set of mechanics which we can... He'll do one final set of mechanics of the Graven Images and then he'll enrage. So I was like, right, let's just LB3 because I think we're in the end, end stage now and I think the boss just dies. Because I don't think we need the healer LB3. Died to damage. I died to not being topped. That's more. That's the more specific. Right, yes, this is where we got to bait in the middle. This was cool. So all in all, this fight was like... It took a while to figure out, but let, let's call it 75, call it 80 wipes, you know, roughly. In fact, the pull count looks all scuffed there. It was something like... It was something like 75 to 80 wipes. And we actually had... Our best pull was at 4%, and then the instance timed out. So we would have actually killed that. We maybe would have killed it then. So we would have saved ourselves an extra couple pulls there. But uh, yeah, it took, took our time with this boss. It's the second longest boss, I think, that we've killed. The second, second uh, most amount of pulls. Um, but really good fun. Really, really, really good fun. Really good fun. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter about the pull. Absolutely not. But it's just like a nice to compare it to like other bosses based on pull count and stuff. Uh, like, oh, no, A8 was our biggest pull count so far. Hmm. It was like 160. It's like double this. Like, yeah, A8 for comparison was double this. But I, my, I like prefer this boss, but A8 was... A is my favorite boss in the game so far because it was just like epic and it was just my my first like real solid boss So it was just like something special, but this was really cool Kefka I think is a fantastic boss probably like it's got to be like at least the second best boss So far, but a lot of the mechanics is really cool. Like I say, I love the variability of What he was gonna do next in a way, but it was like calculated variability once you understood the fight, but initially it just looks like a lot of um variability. It just looks like it's a bit random. It does just look like he's doing random mechanics. But then very quickly you realize that he is not. Uh, so yeah, that was really, really good. Overall, I think I think it's probably yeah, like the, probably the second best fight that I've done. Um, visually, it was fantastic as well. Yeah, so it was, it was a really fun boss. Really, really fun boss. I enjoyed it a lot. Nice. So that was our little, like, review of that. Because I wanted people... I know people wanted to, like, hear... <laughs> Look at that image. I know people wanted to, like, hear about my thoughts and stuff on it. I, I think I think it was, um... Yeah, I really liked it. I like that these bosses in Omega are, like, more... There's more variety. There's more, sort of, new stuff. Uh, or, like, more, like... Like, the bosses... They're not just strictly on rails. They do have some variation and stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's good.